Welcome to the Macros for Life podcast, where we talk all things macros, business, and marriage. We are your hosts, Eve and Randall Guzman. Visit our website at www.gtransformationacademy.com, where you can download our free How to Track Macros guide. This guide has helped over 15,000 people start their macro tracking journey. Hey guys, welcome back to the Macros for Life podcast. Today, I have a topic that I feel like is going to really simplify you preparing meals for fat loss and also help you get better results when you're in a fat loss phase. One of the things that I've noticed over the past nine to 10 years is people do very complex things to try to lose weight. They do things like going on juicing diets and they're buying 10 pounds of fruit and vegetables every day, an expensive juicing machine and are juicing the heck out of everything, super complex. A lot of people will go from zero workouts per week to five workouts per week, get tired, sore, burn out, and then they quit. Also, I see them do things like make 360 degree changes on the types of foods that they're eating. And when I say that, I mean going from eating completely like fast food items and then switching to whole foods and it being a, such a drastic change that they're almost tempted to eat the foods that they used to eat. Well, the one thing that I've noticed a lot of people do over the past decade with all of the clients that we have coached through our company is we see people go into fat loss phases and they pick really complicated meal choices when they're trying to lose weight. And what I mean is like very extravagant recipes. Well, if you're anybody like me, I'm sure that you see tons of things on Pinterest and Instagram, even checking out at the grocery store and seeing new recipe books in the checkout aisle. And you're so tempted to download them, save them, buy them. And you're constantly going back to your saved Instagram posts to look at all of these decadent meals. Meals. And when you look at them, sometimes they have anywhere from like nine to 17 different ingredients. Well, I'm actually going to tell you to put that on pause while being in a fat loss phase and explain to you a way that is much simpler and is more guaranteed to help you hit your fat loss goals while you're in a deficit or a cut or what, what have you, however you want to describe it. So let's kind of paint the picture of what I've been seeing happen from the coaching end. People will be brand new to macros or they may be new to macro tracking and get really excited about going into a fat loss phase. And so with the idea of eating less calories, people are also like, well, I don't want to eat gross foods. Maybe I should eat some really cool recipes and then they start digging into making things they don't typically make, um, or they may be even more complex than what they used to. Now, I'm all for you eating the foods that you love while in a fat loss phase. That is why I've been doing flexible dieting with macros and coaching for quite some time. But the thing that I have noticed is the accuracy and precision of those tracking macros while eating those complex meals starts to get a little bit shaky and then it becomes harder to actually hit the macros, keep up with the meal prep and the meal planning with more complex meals versus simple meals. So those complex meals that we love that may have those nine to 17 different ingredients, they're more than likely recipes that serve four to eight people at a time. When you're making these bigger recipes and you're dividing them amongst different people and everything's going into one pot and one pan, the accuracy of what you're eating starts to become a little bit skewed. When you're putting in your entries into your macros first app, they may not be what the recipe is. They may be higher. They may, may be lower. If you are someone that is more petite like me, being off with your macro tracking by 200-ish calories per day can really affect or make or break whether I'm in a deficit or not. We have noticed with our clients that eat these really complex meals that they have a harder time tracking. The, there may be more inaccuracies and they may have a harder time hitting their goal by the end of a fat loss phase with us. Or they may see that their weight loss is actually slower 
or they may get burnt out by the end of the day and plain say, fuck it when it comes to tracking some of this stuff and just throw in whatever chicken enchilada casserole or whatever it is that has tons and tons of ingredients in it. And it's super complex. And then they're not tracking, they're not having the adherence and they're not getting to the goal. So I am actually a friend or not a friend, but, but I am actually um, really a fan of having simple meals when you're in a fat loss phase. And here are some of the reasons why. They will be easier to make. They will be faster. They have less ingredients. It's easier to track. Less ingredients means you're probably spending less time um, in the store. Fewer ingredients also means that you um, are spending less money. If other people are eating in your household, whether it is your partner who is eating on the same pill meal plan as you or not, or children, loved ones, or whatever, it's going to be easier with simple meals for them to add more things that they want than you to take away things or you to subtract ingredients that are all mixed into these meals that have 14,000 different ingredients. And so when you find simple meals that taste good, they're easy to prepare and are in your budget and keep them on repeat, it's actually easier for you to be more consistent in your fat loss phase than making all of these fancy meals. Not to mention that a lot of us get burnt out with keeping up with two new recipes or three new recipes per week. Maybe your significant other is like riding this high of like, damn, Eve is making all these recipes every month. And then you start to get burnout, you kind of lose your traction, you realize they're harder to track, and then you're also disappointing them. And they're like, what, what happened to all of these meals? So I actually recommend in a fat loss phase, phase, finding simple meals that you can put on repeat, you can add little extras to them without making huge changes. And so I know you're probably thinking, what would some of these meals look like that are easy to put on repeat? Some things that are easy to put on repeat are gonna be salads, um, rice bowls, tacos, sandwiches, soups and stews that are a little bit more simpler. I'll explain in a minute when you're making them. And then basically sticking to like the old bro style of macro prep or macro meal plan prep where it's basically protein, carbohydrate, and vegetables. So these are really simple meals to track. They're simple to make. They're not expensive. And a lot of people can do them at different levels of expertise when it comes to cooking. Because let's be honest, you're trying to reach your goals. You're trying to lose fat. You're not trying to be like the next Food Network um, chef. And you just want to eat stuff that looks good, tastes good, makes you feel good, but you're actually making progress. Rice bowls, so easy to make. You can prep your rice in bulk. I like doing jasmine or basmati rice over brown rice. Yes, I'm a macro coach. I'm a nutritionist that does not like eating brown rice and I don't make my clients or force them or highly recommend that they have to have it. Rice bowls are easy. You can prep your rice in bulk and then add your protein on top. Shredded chicken, shredded beef, ground beef, ground turkey. You can do shrimp. You can do sauteed tofu, whatever it is crock pot, salsa chicken. Everybody knows that recipe where you season your chicken breast, you put it in a crock pot, pour in a whole can of salsa, and then let it cook on low for six to eight hours. And then boom, you have your protein. Also to your rice bowls, um, you can add your carbohydrate rice, you can add your protein source and then fill up on veggies. Without having a recipe with everything is mixed in, if you're adding things like avocado or cilantro or a serving of baked beans or salsa or taco sauce, those are really easy to add as layered ingredients versus you having this like big massive recipe and then trying to figure out like what portion did you get when you scooped out the thing. Um, so think about making rice bowls just like Chipotle does. Like they're starting with the base and they're layering as they go. And as you layer, you weigh and track and then boom, you're there. Your rice bowls can have any type of theme. They can be Tex-Mex. Um, they can be Asian. You can do things like um, poke bowls, whatever. I mean, it can be like a buffalo chicken bowl or you can do like your own um, 
kind of soul food, home style type of things. Um, tacos, very easy. You're basically tracking the tortilla, you're tracking the meat or the protein source on the inside and the topping. Very, very easy. It's basically kind of that layer method again, which is super simple. Sandwiches, same thing. Um, you're tracking your bread, you're tracking your condiments that you're spreading on there, and then whatever your protein source is that it goes in the middle. Soups and stews are pretty easy, considering that they're mostly some type of liquid or broth. They've got a protein source and probably some veggies and or carbs in there. Examples of that are going to be things like pot roast, but keep it simple. So you're wanting to think the broth, you're wanting to think the protein, maybe your calorie, your calorie, your celery, carrots, onion and then maybe some potatoes but maybe you want to make sure the potatoes are more accurate and you don't even put them in the stew and you're cooking them on the side they're already steamed or cooked in an instant pot and then you add them to your serving as you eat it um, chicken tortilla soup is a good example of one that's macro friendly it's higher in protein it's lower in carbs and fats and it's a little bit more simple um, you can even do things like buy a rotisserie chicken and buy a soup in a can um, measure out your one serving of the soup, put it in a bowl, take your pre-cooked chicken, and then boom, you add your, your protein source to your soup and that you're good to go. Putting things like this on repeat makes it so easy. The old bro school method of, of protein carb veggie is the way I love to meal prep and I call it the two plus two plus two method. And what that means, it means to make two protein sources on your meal prep day, two carb sources and two veggies. And so that might be something like chicken breast and shrimp. It might be um, jasmine rice and having the tortillas on hand for your tacos. And for their vegetables, you may do sauteed peppers and onions, and then you might do roasted broccoli. And then you can mix and match and make different types of sandwiches, um, bowls, tacos, all of those things, and easy to track. You track the protein, you track the carb, you track the veggies, veggie and any hot sauce, salsa, condiments. Um, one of the things I'm loving like now is like all of the green sauces. So I love like basil dressings, goddess dressings, um, cilantro lime, like the lime crema, jalapeno flavored ones, like keeping it simple. Um, so these types of recipes, like I said, are easier to track easier to be consistent with, don't require tons of skill in the kitchen, um, are easy to customize for other people that are eating in your household and are also gonna be more budget friendly. And then at the end of the day, you want to make the fat loss phase easy. It's something you want to commit to. So when you go into a fat loss phase, you want to be all the way in. You want to be super committed and you want it to be effective. You don't want to be guessing if you're eating these like casseroles and super extravagant things and eating all of these meals out and you're not really in a deficit at least not enough to be losing weight. Like you want to take it seriously, but keeping the meals simple and on repeat is easy. The next thing I would recommend is like, once you find what your like go-to, your go-to simple recipes are, put them on repeat, track out the perfect day, and then repeat that a couple days per week. So maybe you end up making four variations of food and you just rotate them at different meals and times of the day. And then maybe some of your um, other supplemental things will be like a protein smoothie, super easy to track. Maybe you're throwing in some type of nutrition or protein bar in for a snack. And then you literally have everything you need between um, the protein, shakes, protein bars, rice bowls, tacos, sandwiches, soup, stews, and doing the protein, carb, and vegetable method. If you are someone that is new to macro tracking and you are interested in using an app that allows you to be really accurate in your tracking, has a great food uh, log, has a really, really wide database to cover all kinds of foods, even recipes. If you decide to get adventurous and use recipes that people have pre-programmed in databases, I would definitely recommend Macros First. So definitely check out our link in the show notes, which will give you some savings off of the premium method. Like I've said before, it is the best macro tracking app on this planet. 
plan it and it will help you when you're in your fat loss phase and you're trying to be dedicated and consistent, but you're still keeping it simple. If this podcast resonated with you, I would love for you to take a screenshot of, a, of it. Tag us at the Macros for Life podcast on Instagram. Share it with your loved ones, your friends, so more people can get simple ideas of how to do their meal prep and their meal planning during their fat loss phases. Hope you guys enjoyed this podcast. Make sure you guys like, share, and subscribe. Thanks for listening to our podcast today. Make sure you like, share, and tag us on Instagram. Also, subscribe to our channel so you don't miss future episodes. In the meantime, be healthy and get welcome.